up everybody how you doing out there my name is paul olives I've had a couple people ask me about my picking technique that i use it's kind of the uh old school way of playing i used to use it a lot for acoustic since there was no amps and they had to be amplified hold on i got a little There we go, there we go, that's better. So, uh, we'll just get into it. Um, first things first, uh, sit down, hold the guitar, I guess, right? Put on your leg, want a little bit of space, you can lean it back just a little bit. Try to keep the body open so it resonates. Um, you don't want it flat. You kind of want it pointed forward, like so. Let me get this way a little more. Like so, right? And then uh, what you want to do with your arm is you don't want to be on top. You kind of kind of want to get back and around. And that's kind of why you almost tuck it under your armpit here. So you got it under your armpit. Kind of lean it back. Push it forward almost with your leg a little bit, I guess. And then uh, that's pretty much how you want to sit. You want to stay relaxed, feet flat on the ground. And then uh, before you even use a pick, uh, a good thing you could probably do is just kind of make a closed fist, relaxed, almost like, uh, I don't know, if you had a lighter or something in your hand. And just do your fingernails right here on the strings. And what you wanna do is get this, this wrist, the, you know, I, I, it's described as shaking out a match, I guess, which is a good way to describe it. So if you look at my arm, if you look at my arm, see it's not flat, it's up like this. So you want to be able to swing your, just your wrist. It's mostly in the wrist, like this. So if you did this, this is the action you want. This is my fingernails rubbing on the strings, right? So the next thing you'd want to do is just kind of put your thumb down, and you're going to do what's called a rest stroke, which means you push almost down into the string and you land and hold on the string underneath it. So if I'm hitting this low E, I land on the A. So that's the basic that's the basic technique. And then when it comes to the pick, is that focused? I don't know. You don't you there's a couple things you want to do. First of all, you don't play with your fingers out. You want to play with your fingers in. Think of a, an ice skater when they're doing their spins, right? They're kind of spread out, spin in, and as they spin faster, they kind of close their hand. Well, if you're trying to play fast, quick, then uh, you, you got to learn to tuck your fingers in. So what you want to do is tuck your fingers in. Um, this grip almost reminds me of playing with the thumb pick. If you ever played with a thumb pick, it's almost the same thing. The only difference is when you use a pick like this, you get a little more flexibility going on here like this. So as I'm going through, so as you're going through the strings, think of like uh, when you put the little playing card on your bicycle tire and it kind of flaps through it. Your hands just kind of holding the pick. You're letting the pick do the work, so you kind of go down into the string. Let's see if we can get this. Let me see if I can get up here. There you go. Start above a little bit, and you just kind of push it down, and you land on the string. The next one down, right? You can drop your hand a little bit, uh, drop your arm just a little bit. Your arm kind of regulates because you want to kind of keep it parallel to the strings. Now you can lean 
on an edge, you know, one way or the other, which over time will adjust your tone a little bit. Like if you want a warmer tone, it's kind of like a dial, you know, almost like dialing it in. So you just want a clean sound is basically all you're looking for. And it'll come with time. You just got to practice. So, so uh, yeah, you just kind of go through the string. And when you come up, you kind of just lift your wrist. So you kind of almost drop your arm and then flick your wrist up. And uh, one of the things you got to practice is triplets, which would be a down, up, and a down. And then you want to reset and start over. Down, up, down, down, up, down, right? So it'd be something like... So, I mean, that alone, uh, a lot of times I just sit with the strings muted and I'll just go through the strings. Another thing you want to do is always start a new string with a downstroke. It's not really a rule, it's just kind of a way to get power, we'll say. There's no rules, it's just all guidelines, right? You do what's comfortable. These are just kind of tips that I've learned, things that I've wanted to know along the way over the last probably three years or so. So yeah, you just want to go through the strings like that. When you do the down up, you want to get that almost into a, a single motion, like a, like a reflex. Then you could do the triplet, the down, up, down on each string. And then, uh, where's my notes at? Let's see here. Um, as far as your other hand, your fretting fingers, you kind of want to... You don't really hold your hand square. You hold it more of it pointing this way. And as a lot of you probably know, Django Reinhardt, which a lot of this stuff people look towards, I guess. Anyways, he used two fingers mostly. Almost, think of it almost like a playing the violin. You kind of want to, these are your power fingers. And you want to, you can, you don't even need your thumb on the back. If you're doing this right, you almost hug, almost just hug this right here like this. There was a time when I kind of, my thumb was kind of messed up a little bit. And I kind of practiced without even using my thumb on the back because. So there's that. Kind of point your fingers in. A little more square if you're doing a, a vibrato. Um, what else? Fingers forward, triplets, I already said. Arpeggios, there's a lot of, if you're going to play a Gypsy jazz, well, you can use it in any music really, but in Django's stuff, he did a lot of arpeggios. Quick, quick rundown is uh, what's an arpeggio? Well, there's chords, right? And then there's scales. An arpeggio kind of sits between the two. Instead of playing every note of the scale, you kind of skip a step. So instead of going. You kind of just skip the number two. You go one, three, five. So 
that's just kind of like two octaves of uh, an A minor, I guess it is. Um, do the same thing with the major, major sound. The only difference between a major and a minor sound is the third. The minor is here. Well, I'll do it here. I don't know if it makes more sense here. And the third on a major, instead of being here, is here. That's major. This is minor. So, this note and this note are the same, right? So you just, you know, you just noodle around. There's a lot of noodling, a lot of exploring. It's fun. Keep it fun. Keep it interesting. Don't beat yourself up. It's a challenge. Um, it takes some time. It takes some time to get the technique. You know, a lot of us are used to playing flat with the palm mute and the fingers down. Which can be useful too. So, you know what I mean? You kind of incorporate everything into what you're doing. Um... Another thing when you're practicing arpeggios is I kind of like chop, just play short, super short notes, like like when you're trying to learn a, a pattern, we'll say. Right? Like super short. What else we got? That's pretty much it. I mean, getting this te this picking, this rest stroke is, is key, getting the right hand going. I practice down, up, down. You also want to practice your upstrokes a lot. Not a lot of people talk about upstrokes. Those are kind of like the secret to everything. So even though I practice down, up, down, I also practice up, down, up. There's another angle on my hand. Let me see if I can get it in there. <laughs> I don't know if I can hold it like this. So yeah, between resting on a string and you know your fingers kind of rest on the strings that's uh it's kind of how you do it really now when you get up here to this to the higher strings especially get the last string you don't have nothing to rest on so you'll see people drop these fingers sometimes as, as a little as a little bit of a guide sometimes they call this Banana finger. <laughs> but there it is. There you have it. That's basically uh, my picking technique that I've been using for the last three years or so. And uh, you can play loud. You can play soft. You can play fast. Accuracy is much better. It was tough. It was tough learning. You know, I played 20 something years before I started playing this type of technique. And man, it was frustrating for a while, but I got it down. Um, the one other thing I can mention is yeah, when you're playing your notes, it's almost like a bass, like a slap bass guitar or like a funk. You know what I mean? Like. Like a snap, you gotta snap. You gotta get this is your hand, this is your hand. It gets this this twitchy motion like this, right? And that I guess that goes into the, the tremolo. Everybody wants to do the tremolo. Same thing, like you don't have to be parallel, you can kinda angle maybe 
you get a smoother sound and you can kind of roll up the strings. I've talked about picks a little bit in another video, but a thick pick is what you want, something nice and stiff. This right here is probably a two millimeter. A rounded, a rounded tip helps a lot for a couple reasons. One, it doesn't get hung up in the strings. And you get a little bit more of a warm sound. A lot of these have a, I don't know if you can see that on there, a bevel right here. It has a, a speed bevel. Almost like, you know, like a pick that's been worn over time, but they make picks with speed bevels. So all that, all those little things put together <clears throat> helps you get that speed. So there, you, so there you have it. I hope you enjoyed uh, this quick little demo. This is just some tips and some tricks. I hope it helps you out. Keep jamming. I hope you're all well and safe out there. Sending out that peace and love. Keep those vibes high. And we'll see you later. Peace.